Hello and welcome to the Sacred Erotic Podcast, where we discuss the sacred, the spiritual, and the sexual. Today, I am really, really excited to have Christian Graco with us. Christian is a tantra teacher, body worker, coach, world citizen, and he is one of my dearest mentors who has uh, been with me through a lot and guided me through a lot of peaks and valleys. So Christian, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So as you know, we're doing this series on the principles of Tantra from uh, Rudolf Ballantyne, Swami Ravi's book, Kali Rising. And today we're, we're going to talk about as within, so without. And as I was talking to you before we went live, um, or before we started recording, yeah, as within, so without is not one of the listed principles in the book. And I was wondering if you could, so why, why are we talking about it today as, as a principle? Um, <clears throat> I think, that, well, what we were saying before we started is that, you know, all these principles are not, they're not very clear cut right, that you can put them in a box. Um, and because mostly you can't put Tantra in a, bo in a box. Tantra is always evolving. And even the, the book, Kali Rising, uh, from that initial um, project that, that Swami Ravi had, it has evolved already, right? Because Tantra has to be evolving, has to keep shifting and modifying. Now. <clears throat> As within, so without is, is part of the inner marriage, right? And basically what, what, is, what is trying to uh, suggest, right, is in, in some ways it's, it's projections, right? It's, so it's the dynamics that are happening inside of me between my own masculine and my own feminine. It's a reflection of the dynamics that are happening between my masculine and someone else's feminine and my feminine and someone else's masculine. So it, it is very much in the relational. So the relational that is happening inside of me is a reflection of the relational outside. Mm -hmm. So we can use that tool for our intimate relationships or relationships with our boss or with whomever. Right. <clears throat> and, um, so one, one of the ways of looking at it uh, and that is very useful is when, when we see a dynamic that is happening outside of me, right? And I want to have a better understanding of that dynamic, right? I bring that dynamic inside us and like, okay, how is this dynamic that is happening with you is playing inside of me, right? So when I want you to change, Right. I want you to show up more with your mask now. I want you to be more decisive about when we're going to have a date. Right. And I get really upset about it because you're not showing. Up. <laughs> then, then it's, it's time for me to look inside and says, okay, where, where is my own mask? It's not showing up for this. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. How is it that I am not doing that? Mm -hmm. Right. And the tendency that we all have at some point is to, Put, put the finger out, mm -hmm. right? And you're not doing it right. <laughs> you know, if you would have changed, my life would be a lot better, mm -hmm. right? And so the beauty of it is that usually when we figure that out inside of myself, if I can shift it here, it automatically shifts out there, mm -hmm. right? Because then, then my own feminine gets... It gets in a different alignment with my own masculine. So I don't need that to happen outside. I already got that figured out in here. Mm -hmm. So when I figure out here, it actually changes on the other side. Mm -hmm. It's magic, alchemy in a way, right? How have you, how has this come up for you in your journey? Oh, well, I'm married. <laughs> I, ne I never have conflicts in my marriage. <laughs> it shows up all the time, right? When I, when I start getting um, 
um, moody and irritated and kind of pissy <laughs> with with my wife. And then it's like, okay, where's that coming from? And okay, what's what's happening with my feminine that she's so um, demanding <laughs> at this moment? And and I solved it in, in here. Sometimes verbalizing it out there and talking to her obviously supports it, but it's it's a lot more efficient when I do it inside, mm. right? And yes, there's still room for, for us to express it um, outwardly, right? Mm -hmm. But it but it 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 drops the level of drama, and and one of the things that sometimes we get tired is that over processing, right? And keep talking over and over with someone, right? <clears throat> and one of the ways that I see uh, important that 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 is a impacting me today is with politics right um, we see how many people are having very strong reactions to what's happening right and this is I'm having my own strong reactions where is it that I'm doing the same right and boy we are getting uh, such a good learning opportunity with the extreme narcissist Right, and if we all if we all use that tool, we can actually look and say, okay, where's the narcissist in me, mm. and how am I showing up and doing that unconsciously? Mm -hmm. Right, so 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 having someone at, at that extreme is giving us a tremendous opportunity for us to learn about our own narcissism and how to navigate it with more grace, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we all learn from it. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you, number 45. <laughs> He's such a good teacher. I, I can give you one example, right, that I recently met with someone who, um, uh, who was outraged, right, that um, racial issues were, for some people, were not an important issue or mm -hmm. it was not their top priority, right, to solve that. And... So there's a place of saying, of course, racial issues are important. Of course they are. But they're not at the, uh, at the top um, priority list of everybody. Because other people have other priority lists. Right? Like the environment or like LGBT. And so, so the, the outrage that comes out from, from this person right? How dare you not feel like this is important? And said, well, wait a minute. Where, where, where is it that you don't feel important? So I, I try to bring it back to us within, so without, right? Mm -hmm. So where's that outrage that is coming out from you that you, you think that we don't care, mm -hmm. right? Where is that in you? Where are the parts of your issues that you don't care? Mm -hmm. And how is it you're not showing up for that? Mm -hmm. And and then he he got right that he's um, uh, that air of his own lack of compassion for himself. Mm. So he couldn't have compassion for other people for caring about other issues that they're not the same as as his. Mm -hmm. I mean, it still got. For, for him, this racial issues are still very important and it's at the core of his work, right? But it dropped the outrage, right? Which actually makes it a lot easier to have a conversation with him now mm -hmm. <laughs> about social justice, mm -hmm. right? Um, as in, don't, don't, um, don't get outraged because of my ignorance. Mm -hmm. If I'm ignorant, educate me. Mm -hmm. Don't beat me up for it. Because <laughs> there's a lot of issues that I have no clue. Right? I just don't. I'm ignorant about it. And I can't be well informed about everything. <laughs> it's just like I, I got a limit. <laughs> right? <laughs> capacity in, in my mind and capacity in my heart. Mm -hmm. Right? About how much I can, I can take on. Mm -hmm. And we're all doing our part. Mm -hmm. Best we can. But that that just just that shift, right? It, and um, it's it's such an important piece, not just for social justice, right? But for politics, for everything. We cannot be uh, in that outrage place because someone else thinks differently than we do. Mm -hmm. 
it just gets us nowhere. So I can see pretty clearly how this interacts or comes in in our physical world or physical body. Mm -hmm. I think you've explained that quite well. How would this come in when we think about our spiritual bodies or emotional bodies? Or is there a way to think about it in those terms? Well, it's, I, I think that the way to use this principle is, is about how to find our own alignment in order for my spiritual path or for my own sexuality to be more, more in alignment, mm -hmm. right? To, to, it's, it's, um, it's part of the conversation between him and her, right? Rem reminding us that, that the masculine is all about consciousness, Right, awareness, focus, uh, taking initiative, right, penetration, and her is all about the here and now. Right, she's all power. All the power comes from her. All the consciousness comes from him. So, if my spiritual path is not quite where I wanted to be, right, then it's a conversation between him and her to say, okay, so what's missing here? Who, who, who is, which one of the sides is um, unaware or not showing up or, right? And there's that inner dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> part of the tantric spiritual path is to actually have him at service of her, right? So he gets to do, take initiative and take uh, action, right, in, in whatever he wants to do, but always with a focus at service of her, mm -hmm. right? Because when she ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, <laughs> <laughs> right? When, 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 when our feelings and our bodies are not tended and, and being cared for, right, nothing works well. Mm -hmm the rest all collapses, right? Mm -hmm. When our health is not good, when, uh, when we're not getting enough touch, when we're not getting enough pleasure, things don't go so well. Mm -hmm. right? So it's how to get him, right, to take initiative and organization and scheduling and, and all that to set up all the things that she needs, mm -hmm. right? In order for her to be, yay, mm -hmm. life is good. <laughs> So that the things without can be, can show up. Right. Right. And, and when, when this relationship, right, when this re relationship is working smoothly and with ease and, and, and there's good communication and tenderness to, in here, it shows up out here. Mm -hmm. Because in a way, in a way, I, I'm not reaching out for those needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. I can actually ask for more, but not from a plate of neediness, mm -hmm. but more from a place of abundance. Mm -hmm. right? Where do you see... Hmm. Do you tend to see common hurdles or challenges with yourself or with uh, students or clients? Mm -hmm. Well, s sometimes that um, sometimes this relationship is not going so well, right? And there's a war inside, right? And <clears throat> and sometimes it's not fun or, or easy to. Um, to own it, it's not easy to admit that this, that's not working very well, mm -hmm. right? And then what do you do? Well, it's like well, it's almost like you need an inner uh, couples relationship, uh, a couples therapy, right? It usually doesn't go smoothly at the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, the way we see it is that those two energies have been inside of us forever, right? And for, especially for the people who are just uh, beginning that dialogue, 
uh, it's it's not an easy dialogue to have because it's like, what do you mean I have a masculine? And who is she? <laughs> right? Um, so it's, it's start to build that that relational. Mm-hmm. And again, once we do when we do that inner work, it becomes a lot easier to do the outer work. Mm-hmm. So, for example, you're talking about the spiritual path or even the sexuality, mm-hmm. right? If I know what my dynamic is here, what will work for me here, I can. It becomes a lot easier for me to ask, mm-hmm. right? My feminine will love it if you actually take more of a uh, chance with me, mm-hmm. right? Like ravish me, <laughs> right? And then, then we're able to, to ask with more clarity, right? Um, which is it's the basic difference between having a need and being needy, mm-hmm. right? We all have needs, right? But the difference between the need and the needy is that the needy has the same needs, but it's not clear about how to ask for it, mm-hmm. right? So, so it, it, it's the request starts to come comes out in a way that is it's not quite clear, right? You you could often the the stereotypical thing is you know the person that wants a hug from you, and it just it's it's just hovering towards you like. Uh, and you go, so, ew, back off. Like, what do you want, <laughs> right? And that's, that's what we push away. Mm-hmm. We push away so the person's not being clear what the need is. Mm-hmm. But if I come to you and say, I really need a hug, would you be game to do, to do that? Then you, oh, I have a clear request. I can give a clear yes or no. Mm-hmm. That's not needy. That's a need that is being expressed cleanly. Mm-hmm. But if the thanks is, uh, uh, <laughs> right is like, ah. like you, have, you have a lot of experience a lot of opportunities to for this oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yes that showed up a lot in my work <laughs> and and actually to be able to play it that that towards people and we'll go whoa that's what i do well that's that's what happens when you're not uh-huh. clear yeah so <laughs> I know for me, the process is often I notice what's happening on the outside. I notice mm-hmm. that it's not working out there. Mm-hmm. Um, usually go through some anger, frustration, and hopefully can eventually bring it back to recognize that something's not working on the inside. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes that can be clear, but sometimes it's not. Like it can, and I think that can be for me, that can be really frustrating when I can't locate the miscommunication, the confusion Mm. in myself. Like, how can we, how can I gain clarity around that? Clarity around the confusion if they're between that masculine feminine. Hmm. Uh, for that, there is a great meditation that is on the book. It's the he, she meditation, right? It's, it's, a, it's a guide to, um, I'll, I'll say it very briefly, it's a guide of um, using, by using breath, right? You go move through your chakras from your nose to your third eye to the deep third eye. And then we split the body in two. And we use breath just to focus on one side of the body. And, and, and then allow that side of the body to express and noticing what, what comes up when I just focus on, the, on, on my masculine side, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, feelings, emotions, frustrations, um, uh, even, even physical sensations on that, right? And it's okay, thank you for that data. We bring that data to our third eye, meaning that that part of the, the sixth chakra is the part that no longer has masculine and feminine, right? It's all, it's oneness here. There's no judgment, no right or wrong. It's all isness. And that we thank the masculine, then we move to the feminine. We check in with her again with all, whatever information she wants to offer, mm-hmm. right? Once we gather the information, bring it back to the third eye, as in, thank you for that data. I got it, right? 
it's, it's all isness. It's no wrong with that information. And then we move down to our hearts, right? After listen to one side and listen to the other side, then we move to our hearts. And from the heart centered, what is it that they have to say to each other? Mm -hmm. And then we start the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there is no clarity. Sometimes they don't want to talk to each other, right? And, and that's all good. It's all good. It's, okay, this is what the state of the relationship is, mm -hmm. right? Even if, even if the state is confusion, right? Then, okay, we are confused. We'll, we'll check in with you tomorrow. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll do the same thing again the next day. Um, usually that meditation is, is wonderful to do it on a, on a regular basis, but you can only do it on, on, uh, on a need, need, uh, need, uh. <laughs> only when you need it, right? Mm -hmm. When you feel that confusion, when, when there is something going on and you're confused, right? Yeah. Um, and it changes. It changes from day to day. There's some day, some days that he's going like, yeah, we're all good. And she's kind of like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right? right. And, and so, okay, well, what, what do we need to do for, oh, right, we haven't got a massage in a long time. Or, you know, I haven't been asked to be held. Mm -hmm. Or whatever the need is. And it's, it's a relationship, mm -hmm. right? We can't take a relationship for granted. Mm -hmm. Whether it's with your partner, with your family members, or your boyfriend, it's, it's a relationship. It keeps mm -hmm. constantly changing and moving. Yeah, I often notice when I come back to this meditation, if, especially if I haven't done it in a while, because I do have a tendency toward existing more on the masculine side. And so mm -hmm. going into the he, she meditation, sometimes it's like, oh, where is she? Where is she? There's like this energy of her facing the corner with their arms crossed, like refusing to huh. come out. Huh. You haven't been paying attention to me. Right. You have so, to... I won't, so I won't pay attention to you either. I'm just going to hide <laughs> here in the corner and just let it be. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, oh, wow. Such a, such a good, uh, it's so clear. Mm -hmm. Well, so, Christian, oh, so go what ahead. Do you, what, do you, what do you do then? Well, it usually comes into, I mean, like you said, it's like any relationship. I sit there and I just say, okay. And I ask, like, what, what do you need from me right now to come out of the corner? Uh -huh. And then sort of sitting with that. And what do you need from me to come out of this dark room? What do you need? What do you need from me to show up fully today to be with me all day? Mm. And sometimes it's been like really clear. It, it tends to be more clear if I'm really vigilant about this meditation, but sometimes it's just, you need to check in with me five, five more times today. Right. She gets a little demanding. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you an invitation. Right, because even your question, what do you need to come out of the corner? You're telling her that she's wrong for being in the corner. Mm. That she needs to do something different. <laughs> He's already trying to fix her. <laughs> it doesn't go so well with her. <laughs> good point good point. you know it's like the, that the very stereotypical thing right very stereotypical it's like don't don't point to a woman what's wrong with her what she needs to how, how to fix her it's like that never goes well <laughs> yep <sighs> uh, well you christian can, you, you just just one second you can express your longing for her Mm. you can express your longing for her i would love to see you more mm. let I me like know that. what let me know what i can do to support you mm. i like that yep and for people who are just coming into this practice or just getting introduced to the principles 
do you have any advice for how they might approach this in an accessible way, this principle of as within, so without? Meditation, meditation, meditation. Mm. To, to actually go inward and meditate on, on what's happening. Mm -hmm. To do the actually the inner inquiry. And, and it's, it, in the beginning, it's more helpful, more useful to have guidance. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has done it in a, for a while to actually help you guide. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of guidance, um, I know your Intro to Tantra workshop is, is it May 12th through the 14th? That is a good question. I don't have a calendar in my head. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, yes, it is, it is in May. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the 12th through the 14th. I'll post yes. the, the flyer on, oh, yeah. on the show notes. Um, but do you want to give a quick blurb about that? Sure. So um, the workshop is uh, from a Thursday evening to Sunday. And um, we will go through all the principles, right? Some of them with more in-depth than others, especially around masculine, feminine, and the chakra system. And, and it's all um, going deep into the process and teaching. We will do some practical exercises, sometimes with touch, um, uh, uh, with a lot of yoga and meditation and food and prayer and fun and dancing dancing i don't remember dancing you don't we'll rem we'll, we'll dance maybe i blocked it yeah <laughs> <laughs> probably uh, we usually play two three songs bef uh, after each break you know just to move our bodies and you know mm. otherwise we, we're sitting and listening and talking and sharing yes. so body movement is good just to shake things off <laughs> and Christian, do you want to share with folks how they can work with you if they want to go deeper, or is there anything you want to uh, advertise about your work? Oh, I I'm so bad at that. As a inner promotion, I'm so bad. But um, well, um, I'm not even know what to say. Are you? St do you still do one on one coaching work? Um, I, I do, but it's, it's almost, it's, it's almost coming to an end. Okay. I, th I think by the end of the year, I'll probably be complete with it. Okay. Um, I, especially around the sacred intimacy work, it's, it's coming to an end, uh, coaching one-on-one -on -one over the phone or in person. Yeah. I'll continue to do that. Um, mm. uh, yeah. Okay. But you know, you can put my contact info on, on uh, <laughs> on the podcast okay. that people can reach out <laughs> i will i will definitely do that yeah uh christian thank you so much this has been wonderful thanks, as thanks for having me. and fun as always <laughs> <laughs> why not if it, if it ain't fun don't do it <laughs> all right christian i, I will know. say bye for now bye bye